afternoon, you guys. My name is Altney. I'm uh, 37. I I work as a lawyer. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and I like the reaction that I get when I tell people what I do because people often ask me stuff like, what kind of lawyer are you? Are you a human rights lawyer who helps people and fights for justice in the world? Or are you a sociopath? <laughs> That's the kind of two versions of lawyers that people have. And interestingly enough, that question, are you a sociopath? It's a little dif difficult to answer. So I, of course, say, no, not at all. Me, no. And people go like, isn't that exactly what a sociopath would say? <laughs> what kind of a sloppy sociopath would just confess right away? <laughs> so I'm kind of lawyered right there. But people also ask me, like, being a lawyer, is it like, be is it like being a lawyer on the TV shows? Is it similar? And it's a little similar, but on TV shows, everything happens much faster and it's much more sexy. Like if you're a TV lawyer, you come into the office in the morning and you meet your first client who's always being framed for murder. <laughs> and then within five minutes, you're in the courtroom. It's full of people. It's very excitement, much excitement in the air. And you have to ask your first witness. It's a key witness. You take the documents and you instantly see something and you ask the witness something like, wait a minute, didn't you tell the police you couldn't see without glasses? And the witness stands up, I did it, I murdered him. And your client is free to go, just walks out of the courtroom, doesn't have to pick up any things, no problems. You have a hot dog and it's lunchtime. That's the day of a TV lawyer. In reality, this, this takes about two years. <laughs> this process and your client isn't being framed for murder he he's being accused of stealing an old car which he probably did so it's, it's a little more boring there's a lot of paperwork you know the printer doesn't work stuff like that and when the TV lawyer comes home and talks to his family after the day he can say things like today I saved an innocent man from jail I can say to my kids, kids, today I saved an innocent printer from a paper jam. <laughs> so it's, it's different. But people also ask me, like, uh, in Iceland, do they, have a, do they have a jury system? And uh, Iceland has too small of a population for that to ever work. <laughs> we, are, we are too connected. Although it would be very, very convenient for the defense lawyers, because you could say stuff to the, to the jury, like, dear members of the jury, uh, you have to acquit my my client, your nephew. <laughs> this man is not a member of a gang, he's a member of your family. <laughs> uh, and the chairman of the jury would read the word if it would go something like this. Yes, we find the defendant not guilty, given that he comes home right away, cleans his room and finishes his homework. <laughs> oh, mom, that's so lame. <laughs> The population of Iceland is, is, is so small that we count ourselves by the 50,000s. We are 350,000. Uh, I once met a man from Brazil and I asked him, how many people live in your country? And he said, ah, I think it's about 200 million. And I looked it up. It, the correct answer is 209 million. His approximation just wiped out nine million people. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if he would have he been asked how many people live in Iceland, he would probably say, ah, it's around zero. <laughs> we, we can't afford any approximations. Every person here counts. And, and I personally like to keep this very, very accurate. So when people ask me how many people live here, I just tell them exactly 355,127. But of course, if you count Sigurd and Helga, they're moving back from Denmark next week, it's 129. But of course, old man Jón at the hospital doesn't have much time left, so he could be one down. <laughs> Try to have it. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> of course, we, me and my wife, that is the beautiful woman here, we are, we are, we are trying to grow the population of Iceland. <laughs> In, in China, they had a one-child policy, which meant that couples couldn't have more than one child. Here we have a minimum of three. Yeah. And if you can't get your wife pregnant, the government will appoint a man to do that for you. <laughs> so there's a lot of pressure. You know? but we, have, we have three wonderful kids, and uh, our youngest one is, is two. And he is picking up all our words now. And uh, one of the words he has picked up is, is grandmother, or amma in Icelandic. But he has, it has a very general meaning for him. It basically means every woman above 50 years of age. <laughs> so when we went to the swimming pool the other day, he saw a lot of grandmothers. He just stood there pointing at them. Amma! 
Amma, Amma. It was years of investment in skin lotion for these women just going down the drain. Very sad thing. One of the women actually answered us. She was there with her family. And my son pointed to her and said, Amma. And she turned to her family. Well, I certainly wouldn't mind being a grandmother. <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on having kids. Uh, another word he has picked up is uh, is uh, Santa Claus or ho 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 as he as he calls it. That is that is every man with beards. And I don't know if you've seen Icelandic men; they all have beards, all 177,357 of them. So when we went to the hot tub, he he was also pointing again. He was like ho ho ho, amma ho ho ho, amma. So it was a rough day for me. I was I was running around chasing him and, and giving out apologies to people. Ma'am, you don't look a day over 30. <laughs> Sir, my son did not mean to imply that you are an old bearded man who breaks into houses at nights. <laughs> because you can't be too careful about these things these days, you know, you don't want to insult anyone, you know. But actually I had a, I had, it was an interesting thing the other day, I, I got insulted through a compliment. Uh, the thing is, uh, last year I, I lost a little weight. Yeah, about a, one year ago I, I went to the bakery and I bought a lot of stuff and I took the bag with me and put it in the front seat of my car and it was so heavy, I bought so much, the car thought I had an extra passenger and started beeping. <laughs> I, I was so greedy, the car thought I had an extra passenger, I even had to put the seat belt around just to silence the car. And I, I decided it's time to do something about this, so I, I, I lost a few pounds and I, I met a friend of mine the other day and he hadn't seen me for a while he said, ah, you, you lost some weight, good job. I don't think so. Yeah, I remember the last time I saw you, you looked terrible. <laughs> yeah, you were really fat. <laughs> this was so interesting, it was like the older, fatter version of me just didn't exist anymore. <laughs> he was just a person we can bat mouth together. <laughs> but yeah, that guy, he was <laughs> But then I also said to him, yeah, that guy, he told me before he started losing weight that he, he didn't like you. <laughs> I, I, I think he hates you. But he is, of course, not here. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah!